Right guys, thank you for joining me once again. Uh, today we're going to be looking at on Ken in the forum, the negative. Um, I know this one is also another problem where people start struggling to use knee. Right? Um, you normally find guys using one knee or they swap it around and they don't know what position the uh, the knee comes in. So let's see. Let's do. Let's put one sentence quickly on the board, and then we can uh, start figuring it out. Right. Then in our book, there in on page two hundred and fifty-six, uh, they say there are sentences there uh, where normally we we use two knees in the negative, and then sometimes we use one knee. Right. Um, Sometimes when we have to ask a question, then we have to use two knees when we reply, and then also when sometimes when we make a statement, we use one, right? So the next sentence I'm going to put here, this is a statement where the person is saying that someone is not working, right? Say, work me, right? So this is a statement. This is also, this is a sentence where she's making a statement of someone that does not work. In these cases, very short sentences, there can only be one knee. Alright. Then another thing to be looking out for is our verbs, right? The uh, the negative in Afrikaans here, we're looking for our verb. And then in the longer sentences, we have the verb one and the verb two. Right? So let's see in the longer sentences how we're gonna sort this out. Right. Let's put a, a longer sentence there where we use two knees in the uh, negative, right? Yay, that me, art, me, right? This now, this now could be a, a sentence to a reply where someone says, ek ver art, right? Ek ver art, and then someone says, no, brother. You are not working hard, right? Then you say, then then you have to look at the structure here, where we are going to start using our negative, right? On the two miss. Remember, there's always two in the longer sentences. One in that position, two in that position, right? Let's see. There, in the sentence, we are looking for our verbs, right? We have to look for our Verbs. Where is our verb in this sentence? First, where is a verb? Is verb, and then uh, art. Art is something like a describing word. Yay, verb me, art me. Right. So let's look at this one. Um, yay, verb. This is our verb. The first me comes directly after our first verb. Right. Directly asked after in any other sentence after our first verb. Then the last, the, the second me, and there must always be two, the second me goes directly to the end of that sentence. Alright? It goes directly to the end of that sentence. Remember, after the first verb comes the first me. Right? In that position. Right, let's see, let's look at another sentence quickly. Um, um, I just love you fast me. If I were to ask a question like, hey, can you brief for course? My question would be, let me be brief for course. I'm asking if someone uh, posted a letter, and then the reply, uh, no, I did not post the letter, near, right? Ek het me the brief me. Right, let me just move the camera here down so that you can see. Right, there we are. Firstly, we have to now check. If there was a question asked, hey, Jay, the brief for post. Did you post the letter? Now your response is going to be no. Right? Then there's a comma there. Please take note of that comma because some people are asking questions. Why is there three miss in a sentence, sir? All right. Here we get to the second part of the sentence. There, we, there is our subject. There is our verb one. Right? There is our 
first ni in the position after the first verb, right? Then the rest of the sentence, ek het ni, then our object, the brief, and then hapos is, is our verb too, because when we have het in the sentence, our verb gets ge in front of it at, to the end of the sentence, right? Then our verb too still goes to the end of the sentence, but our second negative, our second me, goes directly after the verb too. Alright, so there is our second me at the right at the end of the sentence, right after our verb to. Can you see? Then um, remember that our first me comes directly after your first verb, your verb one. Right, there is our subject for the sentence, and then this is our reply no. Our subject for the sentence, our verb one. Remember, we are doing our stompy when you do this. Then when you're doing the negative, you still follow the stompy, except you are now only obeying other rules for negative, right? Subject, ek, first verb, et, past tense, and then your first, ni. Then the object, and then verb two at the end, but then ni right after the verb two, okay? So please, right, uh, please remember to do that. Then you will never, ever, and ever again have the same problem of having to use uh, putting ni on the uh, incorrect position. All right. Always remember that the first ni, the first ni comes directly after your first verb, and then the second one goes right to the end of the sentence, right after your second verb. All right. The second ni, end of the sentence, right after your second verb. Verb two. All right. Right. We're going to change uh, the board quickly there. Then we're going to be dealing with uh, on Kenan's word, like uh, no one, someone, somewhere, and so forth. We're going to translate them quickly. Then we're also going to see how we use them in sentences with uh, in the negative, right? Right. Stay tuned for uh, video number two for on Kenan the negative. Um, yeah. Please remember to tell a friend, uh, subscribe, download for later viewing, like my page. Thank you for visiting. Check out for number two, okay? On Canada Forum, negative video two, okay?